The National UDL Task Force Chair, Ricky Sabia, talks about how the group was initially formed. In 2006, we started a National UDL Task Force because, for a number of reasons. One of them was right, right before that time, I first was introduced to UDL uh, through my job with the National Down Syndrome Society. When I heard about UDL, it really resonated with me because at the time I had a sixth grader who has Down syndrome and we were trying to keep him included in regular education classes and the difference between his abilities and the other students' abilities in terms of the content was getting greater. It was apparent that he was able to do so much more than anyone thought in classes where you know the UDL concept did work well. And that it not only benefited him, but it was also benefiting a lot of other students in the class. And that, to me, seemed like something that really should be available for all students, not just for my son or somebody that happened to hear about UDL, but really on a grander scale. And the only way I really knew how to do that was through policy and to try to get that introduced. And at that time, we were just starting to look at ESEA reauthorization, Elementary Secondary and Education Act. That was a perfect time to try to bring groups together and say, what about trying to put something like this into the Elementary Secondary and Education Act to ensure that all students really are getting access to the curriculum, are getting the instruction they need, and also that the assessments would be accurate because that alone would help states and districts show that they are teaching their students. 